for leading us in an awesome worship set. Yes, so good. So I just want to share just really quick, um, just something that God has been teaching me, reminding me personally um, in this season that I'm in. Um, and it's just his goodness and his mercy that have been following me. I have been reminded of Psalm 23, super like familiar passage to a lot of us. It starts with, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And it's just this beautiful picture of, of God, or David talking about God as a shepherd, how he loves and cares and provides for us. Um, but the last verse of that passage says, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Man, yeah, clap for that. It's so good. <laughs> man, I just had such a, maybe it's like a cheesy, silly kind of analogy, but I've got these two dogs at home, right? Some of my small group girls have been to my house. They've met my two dogs. Um, and they are the sweetest Labradors you've ever met. I've had them since they were little pups. But let me tell you, they follow me literally everywhere I go from one side of the house to the other. If I get up for a second, they're gonna come with me into the kitchen. They're gonna follow me around outside. And I just, as silly as it is, I felt like God just gave me like, this is a tangible picture of what goodness and mercy look like following me everywhere I go. And literally like, if I don't pay attention, I will turn around and trip over them. So literally like you guys can be walking around, you can turn and you can trip over God's goodness and his mercy in your life. No matter what you came in to tonight with, whatever burden or heaviness or conflict, no matter what you're going into, maybe uh, just like just hard conflict times or, or struggles that you're facing, just be reminded that God's goodness and his mercy are following you every step of the way. It's so good. Yeah. Be encouraged. Receive that tonight, friends. We've got a great night ahead of us. We're going to hear a word from Pastor Nate. Yeah. It's the fall flannel. Like, come on. So as you head back to your seats, high five a few people. Tell them they look great in their flannel. And we'll keep rolling. What's up, Motion Night? Man, you look great. You sound great. Isn't it good to just be together? Come on, I see people giving deep hugs and just, oh, I missed you hugs. And hey, what's up? How were your two days off from school? How bored were you? How many of you were just off from school this week? How many of you voted for the first time ever? Yeah, a few of you. Yeah, a couple of you. That's cool. Man, That's you never forget that. Yo, where's Richmond at? Make some noise, Richmond. Midlow Mosley Espanol, where you at? Man, it's so good. It's so good to be together in the same place. I miss it. I love it. It's one. This is my favorite night of the month, Motion Night. It's so so good. I uh, just wanted to share a few things coming up uh, before we get to our message tonight. Uh, first thing would be that tomorrow is women's night yeah come on hey and we have get this over 1400 ladies signed up for women's night which is crazy how many of you are going to women's night there should not yes okay i hope some of you go listen don't miss it because this is a really cool opportunity for you to invest in yourself and in relationships with others so here's the thing, in case you didn't know, or tonight's maybe your first night here. It's Thursday and Friday, and both nights are the same. So you go tomorrow night, you don't have to go Friday, you're not missing anything. It's the same exact thing both days. But man, 
You can sign up on our website. The link is in our Instagram bios. You got to go. I'm telling you, there's just so many cool things planned for Women's Night. I just don't want you to miss it. So go. Get a girlfriend. Bring them together. Go grab some canes before you go because canes is life. I'm telling you. And then roll in for Women's Night. It's going to be awesome. Pick a night and go. You're not going to regret it. Trust me. Last thing I want to share with you. Last year, we participated in a gift drive for Mercy Mall. How many of you helped with that? Okay, more than are saying yes, but you did. So here's the thing. Mercy Mall reached out to us again, and they said, hey, there's a lot of kids in our community, kids you go to school with, kids that live in the city, kids that live in our surrounding area, like people you might know who, listen, check this out, aren't going to have the Christmas you might have. And so we have an opportunity to donate gifts and toiletry items and regular goods like undershirts and socks and shoes and a skateboard and a soccer ball and what like some things that people need to have a great Christmas. So here's what we're doing. On the link, there's a link on both Richmond and Midlow Chapel Students Instagram and you can see, you can click this link and see the list of all the things that they're accepting for us to donate for Mercy Mall, for the gift drive. And so from now until the end of the month, you guys know about Motion Midweek, right? So from now until November 29th, everyone say November 29th. November 29th, we're having a packing party during Motion Midweek right here at this location. And Richmond's going to have a packing party in Richmond. You'll hear about that later on. But we're going to pack these gifts and we're going to wrap them up and collect them all and donate them to Mercy Mall so that kids in our community can have a great memorable Christmas. So save some of your paycheck. Maybe don't go to Starbucks like 17 times between now and the end of the month. Save some dough and go to Walmart, go to Target, go somewhere and get a kid a gift that they're going to play with and remember for the rest of their lives in a really difficult season they might be having. You have an opportunity. Hey, we're all about helping people know God, find freedom, and make a difference. This is an awesome, easy way to make a difference motion. So Check that out on the link on our bios on Instagram, and we're going to have a packing party at the end of the month on the 29th. But hey, why don't you turn your attention to the screens as we get rolling with the night. Well, there's plenty to keep you occupied. We've got uh, magazines. This is a jigsaw puzzle. It's broken. That's the object. You're supposed to put it together. Motion, you guys are looking fly, looking fresh in your flannels. Turn to someone next to you and say, yo, you look fresh. Turn to someone else and say, yo, you look fresh. But you got, you got to do it right. You can't just be like, you look fresh. Like, you got fresh. You got to put a little bit on it. Yo, I am so, so, so excited um, to just to be here tonight. I love Motion Night. Um, if we haven't met, my name is Nate Jones. Say, Nate Jones. Appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Stop. You're making me blush. You just can't tell. So it's okay. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, man, I love Motion Night. I actually serve on the outreach and student team here at the chapel. And it is incredible. It is incredible. I love nights like this because, man, we have an opportunity to just be together as a student body, just kind of all together having fun. We kind of break a little bit of rules. We get a little bit crazy in here. Turn to someone next to you say we get a little bit crazy in here then turn to that person back and be like, you're the crazy one? Yeah, yeah. But here's the deal. Nights like this is very, very, very special. It takes a lot of people to pull this thing off. And so with all that you have in you, like with all that you have in you, can we thank our pastoral team, our production team, our worship team, our motion small group leaders, our midweek motion people? Oh, you got more than that. Come on, just give them thanks. That's for you. 
We thank you, we love you, and we couldn't do it without you, nor would we want to do it without you. So like uh, KJ said, man, it's fall flannel. So I want you, if you're in your flannel, if you're looking pretty good, you're looking pretty fresh, I want you to go ahead and take a picture, tag Chapel Student, uh, Instagram, tag the Midlow one, Richmond one. We just want to show off that we do fall flannel right and we look fresh. So I'm so honored to be kicking off this theme. I'm so honored to be talking tonight. Um, but I got to be honest with you guys. As I was preparing for this message, it wrecked me. As you saw, the theme is about staying, staying consistent and staying faithful. And sometimes in life, I feel like I am the most consistent, unconsistent person. I go, you know what? I'm going to start doing something new. I'm going to start doing something fresh. I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'll start doing something maybe one day, two day, and then I stop. See, I, I have a problem because I go, I'm going to, you know what I love to do? Tomorrow morning, I'm going to wake up at 3 a.m. And then I'm going to get up. I'm going to wake up. I'm going to pray. Get in the word. Then I'm going to go right to the gym. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to work out for like two hours because swole is the goal. Turn to someone and say, swole is the goal. <laughs> That's it. And so I go, I go, I go, oh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Do you think I've ever got up at 3 a.m., hopped in the word, and then went to the gym? No, 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 no. So, so anytime I talk about consistency, I'm always kind of like, ah, uh, here I am. I'm up here telling you guys about something that I am not good at. But the thing about this is this is something that we may start this month, but it's going to carry on for the rest of your life. This message is for everyone in the room. And so I'm just saying, I'm up here and I'm saying, this message is especially for me. So please don't look up here and be like, that's a consistent guy right there. No, don't do that. All right, I'm in this boat with you guys. So we're going to do that all together. Sounds good? All right. In fact, why don't you go ahead and raise your hand and tell me if you've ever tried to change something in your life or you hope to change something in your life. That should pretty much be all of us. We all have something that we should be trying to change in our lives. Maybe you raise your hand because you're like, you know what, I'm hoping to change my math grade right now. Maybe you raise your hand, you're going, ah, oh, I'm hoping to way, I'm hoping to change the way that the clothes is fitting on my body right now. Maybe you're going, oh, I hope, I hope, I hope that I can improve the relationships around me. One of my things is I hope that I can get more organized. Any unorganized people out there? Yeah, wow, thank you. Hey, I'm so glad that you identified. Maybe we can start a small group or something together, do this thing right. We'll see. So hear me out. Hope is good. Say hope is good. I don't want you to go through life without hope. Hope is really good to have, but catch this, and I actually wrote this down. Hope alone won't change your life. Habits will. See, I hope that you have hope that things will change, but without changing your habits, your life will not change. I can sit back and say, I would love, I hope to read more. I can sit back and say, I would hope to work out more, work out, period. I was to say I would hope to spend just intentional time with my wife, Brittany. But I can come home with all the hope in the world. And if I come on, turn on the TV, sit on the couch, stroll through Instagram, or fire up the old Rocket League. That's right, I play. Anyone else in there? Add me. I play. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, don't cheer. I just told you, don't cheer too loudly. I'm trying to intentional time with Brittany. So if I'm playing Rocket League, don't cheer for that. Calm down, y'all. Gosh, they're not married yet. So. I'm just telling you, if I don't put, if I don't change, if I don't, if I just sit back and have all the hope in the world, but I don't change my habits, then my life will not change. Like I said, I start doing something, but then I start to get discouraged. I start to wonder, oh, man, this is really working. It's anything actually changing in my life. I learned very young that you can't spell procrastinate without Nate. Just saying, it's kind of in there. You could try, but it won't happen. So I just want to encourage you guys that this is something that you will continually have to work on. We all can go to the gym right after motion night. We all can get in probably about an hour session, get it in, then wake up tomorrow morning, look in the mirror, and some of you guys are going to be expecting results. Will you see any results from one workout? No. Okay, okay. Well, maybe you go, all right. Thursday, I'm going to go, maybe two hours this time. Come home, look in the mirror. Will we see any results? 
All right, all right, all right. You got me. Friday, three hours. Go home, look in the mirror. Will you see any results? No. You will for sure be sore. Like, that's the thing that you're going to see. You're just going to be sore. So, a lot of times when we don't see the results, it kind of stops us from moving forward. You see, the goal becomes just too far to reach. But man, don't we love like an overnight success story? You know, someone going viral, we end up just hoping that would be us one day. Or my favorite thing is watching like movies, and then it's like something happening, and it's like, oh, you just have to train harder. You have to be better. You have to be faster. You've got to be smarter. And so then the movie like has this montage that happens. It's like 30 seconds, and they're like working out. They're training. They're studying. They're being whatever. And then all of a sudden, like, cuts to the next scene, and they're, like, ready for whatever is ahead. That's not real. That's not real because the reward of consistency is not immediate. It's not. So we sit back and we go, oh, I would love to just pop, 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 and get to the end. But you won't. You won't. We want to fast forward and look past the years of hard work and consistency that that person put in. We end up obsessing over the goal instead of trying to just stay persistent in the progress. What if I told you right now that you would be a successful YouTuber, social media influencer, streamer, if you post 100 videos? Would you look at it and say, okay, I could probably do that. But what if I told you, you're posting 100 videos, not all of them are going to do well, Maybe you get a couple of views, but then, you know, you take a couple steps forward, and then all of a sudden you're kind of falling back a little bit. What if I told you that in that time it's going to cost you money, time, friends, relationships? There's so much stuff that's going to happen that because you're just trying to grind and kind of work it out. Would you personally get to 101 videos? Will you make it? Or would you stop after just a couple would you just change your goal all together? Pastor Craig Groeschel says this. Successful people do over and over and over again what other people do every now and then. Because we are not what we repeatedly do. We are what we consistently do. It's not what we do occasionally that makes, us, makes the difference. It's what we do consistently. Consistency is contagious. When I read about successful people waking up super early, getting, getting after the day, and they're, they pretty much solved all the world's problems before most doors open up, I want that. I go, I want that to be my life. Success in our lives is tied to consistency. Growth in all areas of our lives require consistency, spiritually, physically, financially, relationally. We know that, and everyone should know that. If you don't do the work, it won't work. Turn to someone next to you say, if you don't do the work, turn to someone else say, it won't work. Turn to someone behind you, if you don't do the work, it won't work. All right, so tonight, tonight, I'm going to encourage you, because I know you just probably got really discouraged right now. I'm going to encourage you and give you some tools, some tools to improve consistency in your life. When looking to improve, we have to look at certain areas. So I want to give you this tool, this filter that you can kind of just like filter the consistency through. I want you to identify why and apply. So I say identify why and apply. Identify why and apply. Identify why and apply. Man, they're like dragging just a little bit. I don't know. All right. So identify why is extremely important because the why motivates what moves us? See, the why moves us from just being, you know, oh, I would love for this to truly just be a desire. When you have a why, it moves from desire to devotion. See, without the why, you're kind of just lost. Without the why, you kind of just keep it as a desire. I could say, I desire to be a morning person. Clearly, I'm like telling you guys what I desire to be. I'm like, wake up at 3 to I want to be a morning person. I desire to be a morning person. I can have that desire in my heart, but if I don't truly have a why, then I'm not going to get there. You say, I desire to be a morning person. Why? 
Well, because I feel better when I get enough sleep, I actually go to bed on time, I'm more productive, I'm actually ready and prepared for the day, I don't feel rushed in the morning, and I actually have time to just spend and just rest and sit before the day is going. So it's super important for us to not only look at what we desire, but why, for us to truly capture the why. Because when you find the why, you're going to make a way to do it. So I want to sit back and say, you know, I desire to be a morning person. Why? Because of da-da-da-da. Then I'm going to find a way to do it. I'm going to find a way that one day I can be up here and tell you guys I am a morning person. That I actually get up pretty early. I wake up and I greet the sun now because I'm trying to get things done. That's what I hope. And I know without that why, I'm not going to find a way to do that. Say, my why, why. say, my why, why. makes a way. way. My why, why. makes a way. way. John Maxwell says this when he's speaking on consistency. Motivation gets you going. Discipline keeps you growing. This is powerful. So, so powerful because I believe all of us do this. We watch motivational videos. We, we listen to the motivational podcasts. We repost the motivational Instagram stories. But if we're not applying it, if we're not disciplined, it goes nowhere. Man, I can do all of that. I can do all of that. And I can say, man, I, I desire to just really be on a healthier diet, to eat, you know, eat right, watch the motivational stuff, look at the Instagram posts, like it, love it, repost it. Oh, my gosh, I love it. It's so good. Repost it. Do it all. But if I'm not disciplined, then I'm for sure getting that double scoop of just ask ice cream from gelati, which will, at the end of the day, I know, I know, because at the end of the day, it's not only going to cost me financially, because you got to take out a loan when you go there, but also it will cost me physically. Hebrews 12, 11 says this, and it, man, it hurts to read this passage. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. This is incredible because when we look at it, we know that God has designed our bodies to respond physically to consistency and in the same way spiritually. First Timothy 4, 8 says this. For physical training is of some value. Just some value. I love that one. But godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. If we want to train for godliness, it actually requires spiritual disciplines. So we need to make sure that we have our spiritual why or we're not going to go after those spiritual disciplines. As a follower of Jesus, our decisions are incredibly important. The direction of our life is determined by the quality of our decisions. We make our decisions, and our decisions make us. So why do we do what we do? You do what you do because of what you think of you. So if you want to change what you do, you have to change what you think of you. I want to encourage you with this. You aren't who you think you are. A lot of times we say, just horrible stuff to ourselves. Stuff that if someone else said to us, then we'll have a problem with it. But we say it to ourselves all the time. And as Christians, you are who God says you are. And he says that we're his children. He says that we're loved, that we're seen, that we're forgiven. Your spiritual why cannot be determined by what we have or what we don't have. Where we're going or where we're at. Our spiritual why is determined by who we have and what God says about you. So, chapel students, uh, tonight, I believe that we can stay consistent in spiritual disciplines. And we're going to establish our why, and we're going to make sure that we're making a way for God to just do amazing things in our lives. But before we dive into it, um, like I said, I'm just up here telling you this is something that I'm working on every single day. And so my heart, our heart, our hope, our prayer is that you walk away tonight just feeling encouraged, feeling equipped, feeling challenged to make a change in your life. But we are all working on this together. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to pray real quick. So go ahead and bow your head. Heavenly Father, we just come before you. 
Jesus, just asking for you to do a work in our life. God, uh, I just pray for the areas where we just need more of you, Lord, to just shine brightly. God, I pray for those areas to just be highlighted. God, I pray for any distraction that may be going on in anyone's heart, anyone's mind. God, I just pray for just peace. I pray for comfort, Lord. I pray for just your spirit to just fall in this place. Lord, we just want more of your presence. So we invite you in. Like we sung, this is holy ground. So, Lord, just please inhabit this place. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Everyone said amen. Amen. Come on. All right. So there's several spiritual disciplines that we could talk about, but I don't have time for all of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit on three powerful spiritual disciplines that you can apply in your life. All right. Sounds good? Sounds good? All right. So once we have identified our spiritual why, it's time to apply. All right. Turn to someone else and say apply. apply. Say apply after the why. Apply for the why if you're trying to change the... No, don't do that. Okay, never mind. All right, so apply with these three steps. Number one, say start it. To apply it, you have to start. I know that may be like easy, like, duh. But a lot of times this is the hardest step. You know how many people we lose? Just some people don't even make it to this point. A lot of times they sit back and say, you know what? I'm just going to start on Monday. Or you know what? I'll make it my New Year's resolution. It's like the year's almost over. You might as well just start it right now. Number two, say number two. Start small. Don't go big. Because if you go big, you're just going to go home. You're not going to do it. If you make it too difficult to maintain, you won't change. You're going to say, ah, this is too much. And then you're just going to roll back. So don't do it. And this honestly just leads to number three. And to help us stay consistent with these spiritual disciplines, we're actually going to look at someone who is consistently getting her heart broken and draw from her words. Number three is, all you had to do was stay. You got it. Was that the right? No. All you got to do was. No, oh, look. Sorry. All right. This side maybe has it. All you got to do was. Okay, well, all right, this all you got to do is, all right, perfect. Stay. Hey, stay with it. Just stay with it. Do not give up. There may be temptation to just stop. There may be temptation to just quit, but stay with it. Turn to someone and say, stay with it. All right, so all you have to do is, all you have to do is stay consistent in prayer, consistent in scripture, and consistent in serving. So we're going to go ahead and hop in with prayer. The spiritual why behind prayer. You see, prayer isn't just a religious practice. It's a relationship builder. It's how we communicate with God. Last month, we actually went through a sermon series on Sunday, the book of Daniel. We learned that Daniel prayed three times a day, even when there was a decree that was signed that everyone who prayed to a God or human other than the king would be thrown into the lion's den. It's actually found Daniel 6 10. Now, when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. You see, because Daniel stayed consistent in prayer, he had the confidence and spiritual strength to stand firm where others would have failed. We actually don't have time to go back into it, but, man, we did a whole sermon series. You can find that on YouTube. Actually, and you can read the book of Daniel yourself. It is super, super powerful, uh, super encouraging also just to see the character of God through Daniel's consistency. So we don't, we're not going to go into it tonight, but I want to just encourage you to have a consistent prayer life. I want to encourage you to continue to just pray. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says this. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. What would it look like for you to have that level of confidence in your life? Are you only just praying and talking to Jesus under certain circumstances? When the scriptures clearly tell us in all circumstances, we are to be communicating with God. We need that constant communication. 
You see, he wants to guide us. He wants to guide our choices. He wants to guide us through all of life, the circumstances and challenges. And he can offer that peace that surpasses all understanding. He can give us strength beyond our own. You want that confidence? You want that peace? You got to apply it. You got to pray. So first step, first step, you just got to start. You have to start praying. Remember that we want to make sure we start praying, but then we also want to make sure that we start small. A lot of times, some of you guys may be going, I don't know how to pray. I don't know what to pray for. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. I don't want it to be anything where you're just stressed or trying to be like, I got to do this or I got to pray like this. Number one, just start. Number two, start small. Even if it's just you wake up and say, thank you, God, for another day. Even if you're going in between classes and you're saying, Lord, thank you for getting me out of that class. Be with me in the next class. Even if that's that prayer. No matter what, you just got to start and just start small. You don't have to pray for an hour, 30 minutes, 20 minutes. I I read somewhere, I I can't actually remember where, but um, someone said, I can't pray for 20 minutes, but I don't go 20 minutes without praying. So there's ways to do it. There's ways to capture that. But you have to start. Once again, start. Start small. And just start by just acknowledging God's presence in your life. When you set the bar so low, it's better to actually accomplish it, even when it's set so low, than setting it so high and not doing it at all. One prayer is better than no prayer. Remember the why as it empowers you to make a way. All right, number two. Say number two. All you have to do is stay consistent in scriptures. Why is it important to stay consistent in scripture? You see, the Bible isn't just ancient text. It's not a decorative piece on a coffee table or on a nightstand. It's not just a regular app on your phone. It's not just a scripture inside of your Instagram bio. You know who you are. This is actually God's living word, and he speaks truth to us in our lives every single day. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17 says this. All scripture is God-breathed, and it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped of every good work. You see, the Bible is meant to transform us, not just to inform us. I wrote this down, actually, um, as I was studying. If you don't like what you're reaping, change what you're sowing. That means if you're not happy with the results of your life, what you're seeing, what's going on, you have to change. It's important that we look at what we're doing, see how we're behaving, and change that. Staying consistent in Scripture is choosing the right seeds to sow. Scriptures will guide and transform you as you align your actions, decisions, and life according to his word and not your own. Um, King David, uh, Pastor KJ actually talked about him last month at Motion Night, um, and he actually meditated on God's word. The book of Psalm in the Bible reflects his deep meditation on the character of God. Read this, Psalm 119, 1 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Psalms 119, 105, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. So let's apply it. We know the why. We see how important it is in our lives. We know the why. So now it's time to apply. Have you ever, like, left the house without your phone? It is the worst feeling You almost feel like you're lost, like you don't know what to do, like you can't communicate with anyone. Like it almost feels like (laughs) almost feel like you're like in the middle of just like a field, just like uh, like you don't know what to do. What would it look like in our lives if we apply that same feeling, that same level of consistency of grabbing our phone when we leave the house to God's word in our lives? Maybe you're saying, well, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. A verse a day can just be the start for you. Start there. Just grab, grab a Bible and just start reading just a single verse a day. James 1, says this. Do not merely listen to the word, and so, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. 
So that means it's more than just a check mark. It's more than just a streak. It's more than just an Instagram story verse. It's more than that. And those things are great. I, I don't want to, like, don't hear that and say, like, oh, man, what is it? Those things are great. But those things are just reminders to help you stay consistent or maybe even encourage a friend. But if you're not doing what it says, then you've played yourself. You've deceived yourself. Maybe you find yourself not reading the Bible because you don't really understand how to do it. Maybe you're intimidated by it. You are not alone. But it just takes time. It takes you starting to do it. This could be a whole sermon series, or maybe we even break it down a little bit more in Motion Midweek on Wednesday. But there's a lot of different tools, a lot of different things that we can do to help you start reading your Bible, to help you start understanding the Word of God. So I'm going to start with one to help you. If you do not have a physical Bible, find myself, find Pastor KJ, find a small group leader, find someone. We will get a physical Bible in your hands. If that's the thing that's holding you back because you don't have one, we will get one in your hands. That's how important it is to us. and That's how important it is to you. All right. So find one of us. Number two. If you don't have one and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm okay, there's an app. It's called the Bible app. Say Bible app. It's free. Even better. It's free. You can download that on your phone. So there should be no excuses for you to start, even start tonight. That's how great it is. So there's a lot of tools to help you be consistent. We're going to start with one. So when you're opening your Bible, you got your Bible, number one, Find a translation that you understand. The Bible was written in three ancient languages. Each translation represents years of work to help you process the Bible in a way that makes sense. So make sure that you just find a translation that you're able to read and understand. Number two, say number two. Repeat after me. Pick a time. Pick a place. And have a plan. All right. Who here is a morning person? All right, I need to learn from you. All right, so maybe you're a morning person. Why don't you go ahead and open your Bible before the rooster crow? You say, you know what, I'm going to have my Bible open before the rooster crow in. Boom. All right, who's a late night person? Oh, my gosh. Oh, gosh. We got we to gotta change some things. All right, well, um, like the psalmist said, uh, if you're a late night person, uh, I want you to go ahead and be like, well, before I go to sleep, I need that lamp for my feet, all right? All right, so I want you to remember that. If you're a late night person, I want you to go ahead, read your Bible before you go to bed, boom. All right, say pick a place. All right, who here needs just like a quiet place? Like no distractions, just a quiet place in order to like really focus. All right, perfect, that's a place. Who here can like kind of be like a coffee shop, a courtyard, who can be around people? As to like, oh, not many people. Oh my, all right, all right, well. You want to pick a place that works for you. Sounds good? All right. And then say, have a plan. Listen, if it's better for you to have the Bible on your phone because you're actually going to read it, then, like, that's great. That's your plan. But if, if all those notifications and everything else coming through is going to distract you, then you need to switch it up and do something different. Then you need a paper Bible. If you're like, oh, you know what, I'm, I'm on the go, I'm doing kind of a lot of things, you actually can listen to the Bible. I know a lot of you guys listen to podcasts and different stuff like that. You can listen to the Bible. So there's a way for you to start. You can't just look back and say, ah, I don't know, this is kind of tough. You see, when you establish the why in your life, then you're going to make a way. You're going to find a way to make sure that that works for you. And if your time, your place, just what's going on around you, your plan is not working, switch it up. But you have to stay consistent. Say, stay consistent. Once again, I'm just going to go back to the Uversion app because I love it. I absolutely, I absolutely love it. Who here has Uversion or the Bible app? It's the Bible app. It's by Uversion. All right, listen. This is, this is a cool, cool tool. They actually have plans on their app. There's over 53,000 plans for you to choose. So you can pick one. Turn to someone and say, you can pick one. Turn to someone else and say, you can pick one. And you can pick. Now, the cool thing, too, is you can do it together. It's not just you don't have to do it alone. You can do, it, you can do a plan with other people. So 53,000 plans, 
You have your time, you have your place, you have your plans. Number three, you want to uncover the context. The Bible is a collection of 66 different books written in three different languages across three continents over 1,500 year period. That's a lot to kind of break down and discover. And there's multiple tools that kind of help you understand the context of it. And I don't want you to focus too much on this aspect of it because I just want you to start. I want you to just start reading right here, right now. Start reading the Bible. Because number four is actually a very, very, very important one. And that's read slowly and ask questions. There is no need to rush it. There's no need to go, go fast, go through it and be like, all right, I finished that chapter. Take your time. A lot of times, there's times in my life where I like to go over and just read over scriptures over and over and over again. And if you have questions, you can ask your small group leader. You can ask us. You can ask anyone. Don't be afraid to ask questions. But I also don't want you to fully just rely on their knowledge. I want you to be able to find it for yourself. I want you to be able be willing to just grow and discovering um, God's love for you and God's love for others. And that's going to be in your personal time with Jesus. All right. So we have a time. We have a place. We need understanding. We're trying to understand the context. Then we're also looking in and saying, you know what? I'm going to take it slow. I'm just going to read. I'm just going to go through it in that way. I want to go back to uh, actually the verse in Psalms 119, um, where it talks about hiding his word in our heart. A lot of times, um, and this is actually a pretty cool thing, um, a lot of times I'm going like, wow, why would I hide like his word in my heart? If we read in the Bible, actually in John 10, 10, we learn that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so the thing is, we know that we hide things that are valuable to us. We put things away that are valuable to us. If we actually start all the way at the beginning, we see that the serpent, the first like sign of the serpent, first sign of just sin in the world was actually the serpent just questioning God's word to Eve. So my, my heart, my desire is for you to understand this. You have to make God's word valuable to you. You have to make God's word so valuable that you're going to hide it in your heart. Because there's a lot of things in this world that that's going to try to steal it. There's a lot of things in this world that's going to try to question it. And so as you're staying consistent in the scriptures, as you're staying consistent in God's word in your life, you're praying, you're going, God, I want your word to be in my heart, hidden in my heart, kept away safely so that I can look back on it, that I can know that it's not gone. That's why you want to stay consistent in the scriptures because so many things it's going to try to steal his word from your heart. All right. Say last one. Oh, my. That was too deep. Say last one. Last one. Oh, I love it. All right. Consistent in serving. Turn to someone and say, serve. serve. Turn to someone else and say, serve. serve. All right. Galatians 5.13 says this. You, my brothers and sisters. Only I can do that. All right. We're called to be free. But do, do not, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. Say humbly in love. We are called to love God, and we are called to love people. Why? This is our spiritual why. Because our generosity with our time, our money, our talents reflect the heart of God towards his children. So we are called to reflect that. You see, when we serve, we're reflecting the heart of God to others. 1 Peter 4.10 says this, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various form. We know that Christ came to serve and not be served. He laid down his life for us, and we can honor his sacrifice by consistently serving him and others. Man, I'm about to give you something. How do you apply this? Man, this is so, 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 so easy. On Sunday, we have eight live services across four different campuses. That's right. That's right. That's a lot of services. That's a lot of people. 
And I know that a lot of you, a lot of the chapel students are serving in chapel kids. They're serving in, well, that's right, chapel kids. I know you're serving in production. I know you're serving in worship, hospitality. You're serving across the board, and you are making a difference. See, there's people coming into church on Sunday who do not know Christ, and they're responding for the very first time. You're creating an atmosphere for them to respond to that. So thank you, thank you, thank you for serving because you are making a difference. So maybe you're going, I'm feeling a little burnt out. I'm feeling a little tired. I'm doing it. You are making a difference. Can we just honor those who serve on a Sunday morning? Come on. You guys are the best. So that's your start. You can start there. But remember, I also want to encourage you to start small. Maybe your next step in serving is coming to Growth Track this weekend. We have Growth Track the first and second Sunday of every month. And this one actually will be a great one for you to attend. Maybe you're going, I would love to get on these teams. I'd love to do something. Your first step, your very small step, is just showing up on Sunday and growth track. It is, you're going to learn so much. You just heard, like, I said chapel kids, and people are like, ah! it's, it's crazy. It's insane. It's, it's incredible. You guys are absolutely incredible. I want you on Sunday to go to the growth track. If you're in Midlow or Richmond, it's after the 1115 service. Uh, Mosley, it's after the 930 service. We're just so, so excited. So that can be your next step. And like KJ even said earlier, we did the Christmas uh, toy drive, and we, don't, we didn't get the pictures, um, but I had an opportunity to actually drop off um, one of the gifts to a family last year, and I walked into their home. It was a pretty large gift, and I carried it in, and I was like, hey, this is from Chapel students. Um, they just have a heart for the community, um, and the mom started crying. She started breaking down, and this isn't like a... She just, she started breaking down, and she said, I didn't know how I was going to provide gifts for my family this year. I prayed, and you guys showed up. When we aren't serving, when we aren't consistent in that, we're missing out on what God can do in and through you. When we're looking at ourselves, when we're, we're focusing on us, we're missing out on what God can do through us. I want to encourage each and every one of you guys to bring a gift, to show up, bring a gift. If you can't bring a gift, there's no, there's no pressure. If you cannot bring a gift, there's no pressure. You can come, you can wrap the gift, you can pray over the gift, you can write a card. You can serve in any way, but you have to start and you have to show up. Yes. Chapel students, we put our faith into motion by staying consistent. We stay consistent in prayer, in scriptures, and in serving. That's who we are. That's what type of group we are. That's how we stay consistent. But I want y'all to just hear all of this and just remember this. Please, please, please remember this. You're not aiming to be perfect. This isn't something that you go, oh, man, I missed the mark. I'm done. It's over. This is something that you're going to fail at. You're going to start and you're going to fail. But you have to get back up and get after it again. You're going to oversleep. You're going to fall asleep. You're going to miss a day, but you have to go after it. You have to give yourself grace, and you have to give yourself space to fail. But you also have to get back up. If you miss a day, don't miss two. I don't want you to hear this and be like, I got to hit it. That would be great. That would be great. But if you miss it, it's okay. We all have. No one in here is perfect. And this is the most important thing, most important thing. It's not on your own, but it's with God's help. You can't do any of this on your own. You shouldn't do any of this 
on your own. You have to ask for God to help you in this. Everything that we do depends on the spirit of God, depends on the presence of God and the power of God in our lives. Zechariah 4.10 says this, do not despise these small beginnings for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. So it may be just a small step that you're making tonight, but do not despise it. James Clear in his book, Atomic Habit, actually says this about the impact of small habits. The impact created by a change in your habits is similar to the effect of shifting the route of an airplane just a few degrees. Imagine you are flying from Los Angeles to New York City. If a pilot leaving LAX adjusts the heading just 3.4 degrees south, you will land in Washington, D.C. instead of New York City. Such a small change, barely noticeable at all at takeoff. The nose of the airplane moves just a few feet, but when magnified across the entire United States, you end up hundreds of miles apart. You know, maybe you're here tonight and you're saying, I want to grow closer to God. I want to be spiritually strong. I want to hear and know and apply God's voice in my life. I want his direction. I want his peace. You see where you're headed and you want a new destination. You will never get there if you don't start. You have to start. Your small change won't get you to your destination now. We're not expecting that. But you pause and you recognize that you are designed with consistency in mind. So you start today. You make a small shift. You continue to move forward. You make time. You make space. You establish a plan. You're consistent and you're full of faith. If a very small shift of 3.4 degrees can lead and make a plane land 225 miles away from its destination, imagine what God will do with one small step if you stay consistent in honoring him. Never underestimate how God can start something big through one small shift. Imagine the meaningful change that will happen in your relationships, your friendships, in your faith, in your community, in the church, as you stay consistent and devoted to God. But remember, this is with God's help, not your own, with God's help. This is what we're going to do. We're going to identify our why, and we're going to make a way for us to start to apply these small steps of consistency in our lives. We're not going to obsess over the finish line, but we're going to be patient in the process. I wrote this down. You're not successful when you achieve the goal in the future. You're successful when you honor God today with your consistency. Like I said, this is something that we're going to start tonight, but it's something that you're going to work on for your entire life. Um, as we have a chance to respond, I'm just going to ask you just to stand. You know, for a night like this, maybe your first step is to just ask God for help. Maybe you've been trying to do a lot of things on your own. You've been getting nowhere. Maybe your first step is truly to just ask God for help. Maybe you need to ask God just for a hunger and a thirst for his word. I've done that several times in my life when I've kind of felt like, I don't know, I'm not really getting much. I, I, I got so much going on. I just want a hunger and a thirst for your word. He will show up and give you a hunger like no other. Every time you engage in his word, Ask for his help. Maybe tonight you just need to simply start praying, start reading, and just start serving. You just need to start. You need to start going, start doing. That you've thought about it so many times, several times, that you felt it, that you've experienced it, and that you know that it's happening. 
but you, you're not moving. Let tonight be a night that you start. There's several spiritual disciplines that we can talk about, that we can go through, um, that we didn't. And one of the ones that I see just modeled so well in here is actually worship. Some of you guys may be in this room wondering and asking, like, why are they why are they raising their hands? Why are they like really singing loud? Like, oh man, they look like a fool. I'm, I'm just sitting back here. I'm just standing back here. I don't really care. Some of you guys need to discover your spiritual why in that. Spiritually, why do we worship the living God? Why do we invite his presence into this room? That's because he wants to meet with you. He wants to meet with you. That's because he is a God who is worthy to be praised with all that we have. We're not focused on ourselves when we're worshiping. We're praising a God that loves us. We're praising the God that's for us. A lot of times we go, I don't, I don't really feel that or I don't really know that. You need to discover that. You can discover that by reading his word. You can discover that by praying. You can also discover that by surrendering. And I think that's what some of you guys need to do tonight is simply surrender. Just simply say, I'm going to start right here, right now, surrendering to you. And I'm going to pray that over you. Heavenly Father, we just come before you right now. Lord, we're, we're trying to just grow closer to you. And we're trying to work and just strive to just be consistent in our lives. Lord, we recognize that there are so many things in our lives that just take our take you away. They are just distracting. Lord, I pray for the students. I pray for the leaders. I pray for anyone in this room who's just feeling like they just need a change. They're hoping. They're hoping, but their habits aren't matching up. That they're trying to stay consistent, but they're just missing the mark. Lord, I pray with your help, with your spirit, with your presence, Lord, that we can experience you in a new way. Lord, that we can stay consistent in prayer to you, that we recognize why we do it. Lord, that we can stay consistent in reading your word. Lord, that we can stay consistent in serving you. And ultimately, God, that we can stay consistent in worshiping you, no matter the circumstance. Lord, speak to us tonight. We're listening. And everyone said, amen. Still our breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praises, your breath in our lungs, so we pour out
steps. One, to start. Yeah. A spiritual discipline isn't just going to start itself. You're never going to read through the Bible if you don't start. You're never going to learn how to pray unless you start. You're never going to learn how to like lead a small group unless you start. You're never going to know how to serve unless you start. First thing, start. Just whatever it is. Ask the Lord, hey, what is it you'd like me to start doing for you? Start. Then two, start small. Don't just bite off more than you can chew. Don't take on more than you can handle. If you don't read the whole Bible through immediately, if you're just like, yo, I just need to like learn how to like open it. I need to get one. I need to learn like where to start. I need to learn like how to just like set aside time and throw my phone in a pond and then just read it and just like focus for just a second. Start small. And that's okay. God's not like, hey, you didn't read three chapters tonight, so it doesn't count. No. It's not how God is. Just start small, though. All right, today I'm just going to read, like, a paragraph. Today I'm going to read a chapter. Today I'm going to read, and then I'm going to just pray. That's it. And that's okay. Start and start small. But number three, most importantly, stay. Stay with it. Don't give up. The Bible even says, like, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we do not give up. So you might be like, I'm not seeing the results. Well, duh, because, you, you know, it takes time. So stay with it. And I, I, you can count on this. God will reveal himself to you. God will make himself known to you. God will show up in big ways. If you're like, I don't see him, start, start small, and stay. And you can take that to the bank, and you can come back to me later and be like, you were right. I did encounter God. I did see him. You were right. You, I, he did show up. He will do that if you start, and you start small, and you stay. Can you make some noise for Pastor Nate? Man, so good. Thank you so much. Hey, I know you said, I know you said that that message prepping it wrecked you. And I'm kind of thankful because in that moment, in that place of you being at your lowest, like prepping, you enabled all these students to benefit from the fruit that like the Lord gave to you. So thank you so much for being obedient to that. Hey, so afterwards out in the fireplace, who likes s'mores? Well, we've got something better than s'mores, Golden Graham s'mores treats. These are the best things. Go get them right now. And we'll see you next month. We'll see you for the last motion night of the year next month. Don't miss it. <laughs>